morning everyone. Back at the Strickland house and uh, I got so cool. two helpers here and one of our furry helpers on the ground. Yes. Who's Cheeto. the furry helper? Cheeto. Cheeto. Yeah, That's Cheeto. <laughs> Cheeto. Get his hands so cold. So, how was your weekend guys? Good. Good? Yeah? Mm -hmm. And uh, was it nice to have some nice weather recently? Yes. You like yeah. playing outside? Yes, with what? my Spider-Man car. Yeah, what is your Spider-Man car, Hyde? Like, is it one that someone has to push you in? No, you just drive around in. So it's actually one of those cars you sit in and you put your foot on the gas and it goes forward? Yep. Yeah. Wow, that's pretty cool. Did you get that for your birthday? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. And uh, what do you like doing outside now that it's warm? Or warmer? Blaze. Pogo sticking. Pogo stick. Yeah, that's pretty cool. It's not easy though, is it? No. 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 And uh, what's your favorite movie? Let's ask you that this morning. What's your favorite movie? Hi, uh, do you want to go first? What movie do you like to watch? Um, I'll just do it. Okay. Into the Spider-Verse. Into the Spider-Verse? Oh, yeah, you watched that a few times recently. And what about you, Hen? Uh, <laughs> What's one of your favorites, then? It doesn't have to be your very favorite. But what do you like watching? Ice Age. Ice Age? Oh, yeah, we watched one of those, didn't we? No, no, Hen, you like Frozen 2. And you like Frozen 2? Yeah. Yeah. All right, anything else you guys <laughs> want to say? Blaze, how do you feel about going back to school after the weekend? Thumbs up or thumbs down? A good reason and a bad reason. What's a good reason for school? Uh, cause in, in 50 hours slash two days. Oh, right. Yeah. There's a new what? Um, season. A new season of what? Fortnite. In Fortnite, game. In Fortnite. yeah, no. your favorite game. Yeah. Do you like your brothers going back to school on, on Mondays? Hi, or do you miss them? It's school. I like it. Oh, you like it? So you can be home with mom. All right. Well, you guys want to go back and have your breakfast? I, I kind of like it. Yeah. All right. Let's go. Go on, Cheeto. Yeah, you can take Cheeto with you, too. And Barbie, you can close the door. Go on. <laughs> close the door. All right. Good morning, everyone. Again. Bye. Bye. <laughs> I'm not sure if you could really tell. Maybe a little bit over one of my shoulders. You can see we got a, a lot of boxes in this room now. We're going to be doing a kitchen renovation soon, so um, we're waiting for a few more pieces to come in stock at Ikea. But for now, my office down here has kind of become a storage room. Here, you can see a bunch over there. But uh, yeah, this morning we continue in our devotional series on 1 John. I think this is the last week then in 1 John. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, and we'll be done. Today we're in 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. And uh, yeah, you'll notice with First John, a lot of the themes just keep kind of recycling and coming back. Um, yeah, John likes to really emphasize certain things and uh, he'll talk about them for a little bit and then he'll leave it and then he'll come back maybe a chapter or two later. Um, some of the themes we'll see in our passage this morning, again, is that Jesus is the Messiah. He wanted to make, John really wanted to make that clear. Jesus was fully God, fully man in the flesh but also God. Um, Jesus was the Messiah. Uh, Christians should love one another is another theme that we'll see, and that if we love God, we should obey his commands. And so, yeah, this morning, two of those themes I'll, I'll pick up are loving God means loving fellow Christians, and loving God means joyfully obeying Christ. And so, let me pray quickly, and then we'll uh, go into the passage. Heavenly Father, uh, Thank you this morning again uh, for your new mercies that are new every morning. And we thank you that we could come to your word and meet you every day. And so be with us now as we go into your word. Bless, bless your word as we read it and as we apply it to our lives. In Jesus' name, amen. So 1 John chapter 5, verses 1 to 5. Everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ is born of God. And everyone who loves the Father loves his child as well. This is how we know that we love the children of God, by obeying, or sorry, by loving God and carrying out his commands. 
In fact, this is love for God, to keep his commands. And his commands are not burdensome. For everyone born of God overcomes the world. This is the victory that has overcome the world, even our faith. Who is it that overcomes the world? Only the one who believes that Jesus is the Son of God. And so, yeah, the first thing, there's a lot in there. Um, and so I'll just pick out two kind of major themes <clears throat> this morning. Loving God means loving fellow Christians. If we read this passage in the ESV, which I often do uh, devotionally, I read the English Standard Version, it says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. So if we love God, we're going we're gonna to love those who are born of God. But do you find it easy often to love brothers and sisters in Christ? I think sometimes it's, it's easy, sometimes it comes naturally, but sometimes it, it doesn't. Sometimes actually you can find it, maybe it's just me, but maybe you find it harder to love brothers and sisters in Christ sometimes more than showing love for non-believers. Well, why is that? I think two things as I thought about. One is that we don't get to choose our brothers and sisters in Christ, do we? Um, much if When we choose friends or people we're going to spend time with, we... We may spend time with people who are similar to us, have similar interests, similar stage of life, different things like that. But with our, with our fellow Christians, it's just those who are Christians are Christians. We don't get to pick them. The people that go to our church, maybe we could change churches, I guess, but that's not really a mature option for a follower of Christ. Um, our fellow Christians, we don't get to choose. Another reason I was thinking about why sometimes it's hard is that we, I think we have expectations on how Christians should live. And so um, we think they should act in a certain way that reflects Christ. And of course they should, and of course we should. But then when we see them maybe not living that way, it, it bothers us. And, uh, and so we don't really want to show them love. We want them to love us. We want them to show us mercy. But when they fall or when they um, act less than maybe what they should, we don't have a lot of patience for them. In my own devotional reading last week, I was in the book of Colossians, and uh, as I was thinking about this devotional, it kind of came, two things kind of came together. In Colossians 1, verses 3 and 4, Paul writes this, he says to the church, We always thank God, the Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, when we pray for you, because we have heard of your faith in Christ Jesus, and of the love you have for all of God's people. So why does Paul command this church, the Colossian church? Well, he praises them, one, for their faith in Christ, but also for their love for one another. It's not their faith in Christ and their agreement on political issues. It's not their faith in Christ and how they all think the same thing about the lockdown. It's not their faith in Christ and the things they wear, the things they watch. It's their faith in Christ and their love, the way they love one another. The church not only believed in Christ, but they cared for truly for one another. And Paul's very happy, he's very encouraged about this. Um, and and it's bec and why is it so? Why is it that he points out not only their faith in Christ, which we would assume is so important, but their love for one another as something almost on par with faith in Christ for what he commends them for. And I think he he's so happy, and he highlights this characteristic of this church that they love one another because it really truly reflects the heart of Christ. Jesus uh, on the night he was betrayed we were at, at the table for communion a week ago and uh, in addition to instituting the Lord's Supper he also washed the disciples feet that night. And when he when he had finished washing the disciples feet he said this he says in John 13 34 and 35, he says, A new commandment now I give you, love one another. As I have loved you, so you must love one another. By this, everyone will know that you're my disciples if you love one another. Jesus loved his disciples so much that he washed their feet. And if that wasn't enough to demonstrate his love in a real and tangible way, he went to the cross the very next day to die on their behalf to die on our behalf. 
And so this is why the Apostle John writes this. This is why he says, everyone who believes that Jesus is the Christ has been born of God, and everyone who loves the Father loves whoever has been born of him. If you believe in Jesus, you will not only love the Father and love Jesus, um, but you'll love those who are the children of God. And this is constantly something that in this book, uh, John commends the church and calls the church to do. And then whether it was Jesus um, uh, on the night before he was betrayed, washing his feet and saying, this is how they'll know uh, you're my disciples if you love one another. And then Paul commending the church, the Colossian church, by saying, not only in your faith in Christ I commend you, but in your love for one another. So loving God means loving uh, God's children, loving your fellow believers in Christ. The second thing from here is uh, that I want you to remember from this morning for this morning is loving God means obeying Christ joyfully. So listen again to 1 John 5 verse 3. In fact, this is love for God to keep his commands and his commands are not burdensome. If we love God in addition to loving our fellow Christians, we will keep his commands. And there's a way that we can obey his commands in a way that demonstrates to others they're not burdensome. Now, if you want me to give you an example of acting like commands are burdensome, I can go grab Blaze and Haddon again, and I can ask them to take their bowl of cereal that they finished and not leave it on the dining room table, but put it uh, on the kitchen counter or in the sink. You know, you'd think I would have just asked them to go to the dentist or something. Uh, it's so horrible to take your bowl from the dining room table and put it in the kitchen sink. It's a burdensome command in, in some ways to them. You know, but we, we as adults, we can do the same thing, can't we? Uh, if someone asks us to do something that we don't want to, you know, how do, you, how do we react? You know, we might have a sulky voice, you know, do I have to? Maybe that's just our kids, but in our heads, that's how we feel like when we're we're asked to do something maybe we don't want to do. But in contrast to that, think about, consider how the psalmist considers God's law. Let me read a few, few things here for you this morning. Psalm 40, verse 8. I delight to do your will, O my God. Your law with, is within my heart. Psalm 119, verse 24. Your testimonies are my delight. They are my counselors. Psalm 119, 35, lead me in your path, in the path of your commands, for I delight in them. And Psalm 119, 92, if your law had not been my delight, I would have perished, <clears throat> perished in my affliction. The psalmist loved God's law. He loved obeying God's commands. It could be overwhelming if we think about, you know, think, okay, Jamie, now I've got to obey every single thing in the Bible. Well, that's not easy, and that, seem, that does sometimes seem burdensome. But let's go back to the context of our passage in 1 John 5. What, what command is John speaking about specifically when he says his commands aren't burdensome? Well, again, taking it back to my first point this morning, he's talking in context of loving your brothers and sisters in Christ. Uh, John Piper, he was writing on this passage, and I read something that he said and uh, he says this, when John says, this is the love of God that we keep his commandments and his commandments are not burdensome, he mainly means the commands, commandments summed up in loving other people. Sorry, he mainly means the commandments summed up in loving other people, especially but believers. So we could paraphrase verse three like this. This is the love of God that we love others, especially his children, and that this life of sacrificial Christ-like love is not burdensome. It's what we most deeply desire to do as an expression for our love for the Father. It's, it's, if we want to show love for the Father, one of the, the clearest things we can do from Scripture is show love to fellow believers. And you think of it as, as a parent as well. If someone wants to show you love, well, how can they love you? Well, one of the main ways they can love you is by caring for your children. You know, when people play with our, our boys or they give them a gift, it's really meaningful when they um, care for our sons. It means so much to Vanessa and I. It shows love to us when you show love to our kids. And it's the same thing for God. When we, when we show love 
for fellow brothers and sisters in Christ, it demonstrates our love for God. But the, again, there's a way in doing it that shows that it's not burdensome. Uh, you know, when you're, I guess when your kids obey you, you're, uh, you're happy that they just did it. <laughs> um, but even if they do it bur in a burdensome way, but how much more when they do it <clears throat> joyfully? How much more does that demonstrate their love for you? Um, and I was thinking about this, another example I've given before in other contexts. <clears throat> the way we do things does demonstrate uh, the care we have for that person we're doing something for. So imagine if on <clears throat> our anniversary, imagine on Vanessa and my anniversary, I go to some exp expensive florist, like the grocery store, and get a dozen roses for Vanessa. And after that, I go home, I knock on the door, and Vanessa's kind of confused. Why is he knocking on the door? He lives here. He could just come in himself. But anyways, she opens the door and sees me standing there with my hand behind my back. And I've got a silly grin on my face. And uh, I say, Vanessa, I love you. Happy anniversary. And, and show her the flowers. She responds, oh, Jamie, they're beautiful. You didn't have to do that. Now imagine in response to this, I say, you know what? Yeah, I didn't have to do it. But as your husband on our anniversary, I'm obligated to do something like this. So I did. Now, is this uh, statement going to make Vanessa feel loved and treasured? Well, no, not at all. And gentlemen, I wouldn't uh, advise doing something like that or speaking in that way. But let's rewind the story for a second and uh, go back to the point where Vanessa says about the flowers. Oh, Jamie, they're beautiful. You didn't have to get me flowers. And uh, this time I say, you know what, Vanessa, I didn't have to get you flowers, but I got you these flowers because in some way they display, they reflect both the inner and outer beauty for which you possess. And it was my joy to get them for you. Now, there's a major difference between um, the first example and the second example of how Vanessa would feel treasured by the act that I've done. In one case, I'm doing it simply because it's my responsibility to do it. But in the second case, I'm doing it because it's my joy to make Vanessa happy. And in other words, if there's no delight in me giving the flowers, the full responsibility hasn't been done. Delighting in the act is part of the obedience. And um, yeah, that's, it's, it just makes sense. When we enjoy doing something for someone, it means so much more for that person than if we just did it as a burden. And so... This morning, yeah, as you think about this passage, think about the way that you can show love to God your Father is by loving your fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. And the best way to do that, to show love to God and love to others, is by doing it joyfully, cheerfully. So to summarize again, loving God means loving fellow Christians, and loving God means obeying Christ joyfully. So the application I want you to think about today, or maybe this week, but, you know, do it today if uh, you can. Look for an opportunity to go out of your way to show practical love for a fellow believer. And, uh, you know, as Christians, we always think of prayer it comes to mind. Well, I'll pray for this person. Someone brings up a prayer request at your life group meeting and, and you pray for it. But, um, and that's, that's, that's great. But this morning, I want you to at least do something more than prayer this morning or today, or this week. Um, look for, think about someone in our church, in your life group, um, maybe someone who sits near you in church, or a friend, a fellow believer. Look for an opportunity this week to go out of your way to show practical love to them. You know, send them, a, at least send them a text, tell them you're thinking with them, um, pray for them again, but meet a need. Meet a need that they have. Be creative. Do something kind to practically show your love for your brothers and sisters in Christ. And just think of the delight on the face of our Father in heaven as this week our church looks to showing practical love toward one another. Again, don't just hear this word this morning, um, but think about what will I do today or this week to show practical love to someone in our church, a fellow brother and sister in Christ. Let's go to prayer. Our Father, we... We thank you that it is a joy to come to you. We thank you that you loved us first, and so we can love you. You initiated with us. You demonstrated love, kindness, grace, mercy toward us. 
And God, in this passage this morning, you're calling us to love your children. And one of the greatest ways we could show love to you, according to the Apostle John, is to show love for your children. And so God, bring someone to mind uh, this morning, bring someone to mind today that we can do something practically for. And, uh, and Lord, may we not just have good intentions, but what, may we actually follow through on something and, uh, and just bring that smile to your face as you see your children uh, showing love to one another. Be with us uh, today and uh, now as we, we move on with our day. Uh, may we have great communion with you throughout our day in prayer and in your word. And again, with our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ. We pray these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good to be with you again today. And uh, yeah, have a great day, everyone.